this is Wingspan, New Zealand's only centre devoted to the care and conservation of native birds of prey. Today, the centre's founder, Debbie Stewart, is showing off a very special bird for the visiting fans. His name is Ozzy. This is New Zealand falcon, this is Kariria, and it's a bird that's found nowhere else in the world. It, it's completely endemic to this country and there's not very many of them left. We think that there's only about 4,000 pairs of these birds remaining in the wild. Uh, this is a bird that's rarer than kiwi. It's not long before Aussie demonstrates why New Zealand falcon are one of our top native predators. Excellent eyesight. There he goes. Okay, rapid wing beat, close to the ground flying. Oh, look out. Whoa! Oh, he got something. He's got a little finch. He's going to kill it, and he's going to pluck it, and he's going to eat it. And he's going to take his time in coming back. Aussie is obviously a formidable hunter, so why are New Zealand falcons so rare? One of the problems is that they do things like nest on the ground. In the old days that used to work quite well. But then man arrived in this country and we introduced rats and cats and dogs and ferrets and weasels and stoats and uh, falcons become not just predators anymore but they become prey as well. Unfortunately, many of the birds that come into wingspan have injuries caused by deliberate shooting. So it's a matter of letting people understand how special these birds are and perhaps learning a little bit of tolerance because if we can't live with the wildlife, well, where does the wildlife go? Mm. Oz, here we go. <coughs> ah, now you're a falconer. Of the birds that we hold at Wingspan, uh, we try and release all of them back into the wild, but we can't let them go if they can't fly properly. Uh, those are the birds that we pair together and then we get to breed from them and release their young. The falcon breeding season has just got underway. To add to the excitement, another three eggs have arrived. They were found abandoned near Invercargill and are now safely in a wingspan incubator. Uh, we have no idea when they were laid, but basically we're monitoring these eggs every three days to make sure we can determine where they are um, in terms of progress. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. We'll give them a buddy reading, which amplifies their heart rate and measures it so we can determine whether or not the eagle is alive. 431. Yeah, 431, 454. Oh, it's very active. 454 beats per minute. Two of the eggs have healthy embryos inside, but they're worried about the third egg. We'll give it a few moments and we have a flat line. So what I'll do is I'll just turn the egg again, depending on where the embryo is, means that we need to make sure that we turn it around. Give it one more go. And it's another zero. So it doesn't look like this egg has anything inside it, nothing, no embryo um, that's active. But this still leaves two fertile eggs that will hatch any day now. One of Wingspan's key assets in their quest to save our endangered birds of prey is the ancient art of falconry. Uh, falconry has a very long history. Uh, we think that it goes back some 4,000 years. Originally it was a way that you could train your, your hawk, your falcon, your eagle, even your owl to catch food and it's one of the oldest forms of hunting that the world has ever known. At Wingspan, falconry is crucial for helping injured birds of prey return to the wild. Wingspan chairman Noel Hyde is one of New Zealand's falconry pioneers. The rich cultural history of falconry is just incredible and it's really exciting to be part of it. It's not the most successful form of hunting. I mean, with a, with a gun you can go out and point it at an, an animal, pull the trigger and it's dead. With these guys, you have to um, calculate the wind, you have to sneak up and get close enough to give the bird the best advantage. It's a lot harder, but a lot more satisfying when you actually are able to uh, take prey with them. Yeah. So. Today, he's flying his Australasian Harrier, Fran. But what I'll do is I'll just take the flying jesses off her. You're going to be good. 
The difference between harriers and falcons is that the harriers are what we call a searching bird. Your falcon is an attacking bird and will actually pursue prey. These guys will pursue prey, but not, that's not their main method of hunting. They're searchers. A big proportion of their prey is carrion, dead food. Whereas with falcons, they like their prey alive. These guys are actually quite shy and nervous birds, probably because they've been persecuted ever since the arrival of Europeans. There used to be bounties for their feet. You used to be able to get two shillings and sixpence for a pair of hawk's feet. So all humans have done is just shoot them. So yeah, there's probably a good reason to be uh, wary of us. We train these birds to be able to give them fitness and hunting skills so that when we release the birds back into the wild, um, they survive. Mm. But earning the trust of a wild bird is a huge commitment. We're, we're looking at training our birds for up to five hours per day, every day for the first three weeks, and that allows us to be able to work with them. So we've gained their trust. And after that, we're looking at maintenance flying of uh, maybe up to an hour uh, per day. Wingspan's newest falconer, Inika Smets, is about to embark on this challenging process with the arrival of a new bird. So here we've got a, a new female New Zealand falcon, which has come from Paihia Tua. Now, she was found uh, blind in one eye um, and unable to fly, so obviously we think the blindness hindered her from catching food and she lost, lost condition. Uh, Inika is about to begin the long process of training a half-blind falcon called Paihia. If Inika can teach Paihia to hunt for herself, she'll be released back into the wild. So she's already hooded to keep calm, um, and we can handle them easily. They can't see our fingers and can't try and bite us or scratch us either, so it's a win-win situation with the hood. Her first task is to attach leather anklets, so she will always have Paihia under control. And this always sounds worse than it is, but again, because she's hooded, she's nice and calm, so she's not going to be phased by this at all. And she's got a little bit of bling. This is how we tie the birds onto our glove and onto the, the perches or the blocks where they may be sitting now. It's time to get her familiar with the falconer's block. Once she stands up, has a big shake and we see that she's comfortable, that's when we can start having her on the glove, um, walking around with her and, and then you can start put, taking the hood on and off just to get her used to that whole concept as well. Yeah, baby steps basically. <laughs> Not too much at once, otherwise the birds do panic, yeah. For now though, Paihia is extremely unimpressed with life. Here she comes. Come on, girl. Inika leaves her in peace, while she and Millie give a fast-moving display. Paihia is still not moving. This... <coughs> Millie's very talkative as well. <laughs> but then, all of a sudden, Paihia decides it's safe to move. But not very much. There's still a long way to go before this falcon will be flying as well as Millie. Are you being silly, Millie, today? No? Are you being silly, Millie, today? <laughs> Wingspan's greatest aim is to help birds like Paihia and Millie survive in the wild. With this in mind, Andrew Thomas is heading to the nearby Kainaroa forest where a logging company, Timberlands, has spotted a vulnerable falcon nest. Timberlands work with Wingspan so that they can do their job without harming the falcons. The relationship's been a good eight years and uh, we'd hope that it lasts a lot longer because I think falcon are an integral part of, uh, of Kainaroa. The birds like to nest in areas that have been felled but with heavy machinery breaking up tree roots nearby, it's not the safest place. Andrew knows the best way to find the nest is to look for the parents guarding it. So it must be somewhere over this way. Yep, that must be in the male just coming off the nest. All right, let's go, let's find out what's happening. Excellent. Our New Zealand falcon is uh, probably regarded as the most aggressive at defending its nest. So if you come close to a falcon nest, they are nice enough to warn you, but then it goes to physical impact around your head 
until you're deterred from being any closer to the nest and you actually move off and leave them alone. Watch your head. <laughs> they know we're onto them. <laughs> Usually the female's into us by now. Okay. Here she comes. Okay, just watching our feet. Oh, beautiful, three eggs. Three eggs? Fabulous. Look at that. Oh, yeah, nice. Lovely little nest in there. Yeah. So I'll just get a quick shot of the eggs so we've got the record. Not as much response as they often give. I saw a female New Zealand falcon take on a light aircraft, and it's sort of like you or I taking on maybe a 747 in flight. But these birds are so bold, they just take on anything which comes too close. Andrew will now keep tabs on the nest and provide a plan for the logging company. We tag the area off and really if the operator stays 10, 15 metres away from that nest when they're doing their work, it's been shown that the falcon tend to, tend to leave them alone and, and it doesn't disturb them. There's a real relationship with falcon and, and kangaroo and of course wingspan are a key part of that. I don't think we could do what we do without them playing an important role in profiling the falcon but most importantly looking after them.